Hello everyone and welcome to another very very exciting tutorial today I'm gonna be talking about how you can create this kind of animation <clears throat> so this animation is basically very simple and it's all using CSS so you can see that there is no JavaScript involved which is I guess cool to some of those folks that are really you know towards using CSS for things like this. So uh, I'm gonna go through the markup and then I will switch to CSS, right? So as you can see here I have a container div and within that container I have my big circle which is this one and then I have the small circle which is this one, right? And then for this effect of detaching and attaching in this elastic mode uh, pretty cool, right? Uh, I am going to use SVG filters. For those of you uh, who don't know what is this, please refer to the previous tutorial that I went through this <coughs> piece of code. But just to give you an overview, I am using SVG filters. And in order to define SVG filters, which is pretty much, you know, from the from its look, you can see it's very much like HTML tags. So you have a parent SVG, and then within that you define, uh, you know, your defs uh, tag, and within your defs you define your filter, right, uh, or filter tag, and you give it an ID so that you can use this ID in your CSS on the on the elements or, or element that you want this to be applied. And within the filter, I have one type of filter, which is Gaussian filter blur or Gaussian blur filter. And we have an in attribute which says, okay, the source graphic or whatever I apply this filter to is the input of this filter. And then the, this number basically says how much, how much uh, uh, blurriness I want to add. And then the result attribute, which I call it blur, is basically is going to be the input to the next filter, which is a color matrix. And that color basic, using this uh, color uh, matrix filter, uh, what, what I do is basically increasing the uh, amount of the uh, sort of the contrast uh, on my alpha channel. So, as I said before, please refer to the previous tutorial for this, and also I'll put a link. Uh, and then the result of it, I will call it do, right? And then at the end, I will blend my source graphic, which is whatever that this filter gets applied to, uh, and I put it on top of uh, my uh, goo filter, right? Uh, and as you can see, in order to blend using the blend filter, you have first input, which you, you know, define or uh, you set using in, and then the second input, you, you set it with in2 attribute, right? It is pretty easy, just uh, don't forget that we have a big circle in the, cir in the center and then the circle itself. Now going back to the CSS, uh, I will start with the big circle. So I gave it a width and height, you know, 60 pixel background wide obviously, border radius 50% to make it a circle. I positioned it absolute so I can move it in the middle of the screen here. And I used the uh, transform translate minus 50% and minus 50% and the top and left of 51% and 53% to put it where I want it to be, right? And uh, that's just the initial markup. I'll get back to the animation section and the transform on the origin. And then I obviously have my small circle, which is a bit smaller, so width and height of 30 pixel, background, border radius, and again, to kind of center it, uh, I used uh, positioning absolute, top and left 50%, and then transform translate minus 50% on the x-axis and minus 50% on the y-axis. So this, these two are pretty simple. The most interesting part is where obviously the animation of that small and this kind of like uh, filter that is like scaling the bigger circle and uh, yeah let's let's get started on that first of all to have this kind of cool whooshy effect that you see here uh, you have to 
apply your filter on top of the parent of both of these, right? And that is what here in my HTML, that is my container, right? As you can see. Uh, my container has a width of 100 uh, viewport width and height of 100 viewport height. So effectively, the whole area over here. And then I applied the filter using URL and then the ID of my filter that I defined over here, right? It is very important that you uh, that the container width and height is much bigger than the area of these two will be because otherwise it will cut uh, the 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 effect right so you want you want so this is pretty much the area that this circle is moving so your container should be pretty much bigger than this area right and just for convenience I just made it so that it is kind of full screen right. So up until here, everything is good. I have my filter set up. So basically, if I, uh, yeah, so, yeah. So let's get started with the animation of this circle. So this is pretty much a circle that goes like this and then this, right? So two iterations, two animations, basically. One like this and then this. So in order to generate that, what I do Let's just go here. I will transform using the transform property on my animation. So how you define animation, it's easy. Uh, keyframes and the name of the animation. And then you define the intervals that your animation wants to take place. So initially, the beginning of my animation, I want to transform uh, uh, I want to rotate it to zero degrees, right? So no, nothing. So there is no rotation, pretty much. Though, uh, and also on the five percent, and I'm gonna tell you why because there is this really, really small pause that happens. So you see, pause, 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 pause. So I'll I just put this interval over here with the same zero degrees so there is a pause over here and then on 49 percent of my animation what i do i do a rotate of 36 uh, 360 degrees so it's like it goes like 30 uh, 360 degrees right and in the meantime what i do as you can see uh the important part is that makes so so basically, if you have like a circle itself and you apply this uh, rotation, if the transform origin of the rotation is in the middle, you won't really feel any rotation, right? Unless you, you choose transform origin, which defines what is the origin of my transform. So as you can see, initially, I set it to almost 70% on the x-axis and then minus 160 pixel so the transform origin is somewhere over here right that's why when I define the rotation it actually goes up and comes back because from the very initial state which is here it's minus 160 and then I just add a little bit to it but then on 49% I make it zero right so it's like the transform origin is like here in the beginning and then it moves back down here, right? That is what makes this circle to have this kind of movement like this, right? So the transform origin is right here, for example, and in, in the duration of this part, I make the transform origin to move down, right? Move down. And the circle obviously follows that, right? So the transform origin is here, then here, then here, then here, then here, which ultimately makes the circle to go on this fashion, right? And then I will use the same technique, right, for the circle to go like this. And to, to be able to do that, I just move it from, let's say, 70% to 290%, right? So effectively, the, or, the transform origin if I want to show you constantly what happens, the transform origin is right, right here, and then it moves during the animation down here, right? 
That's why you have this and then this. And of course a little bit of a pause uh, in between. So I have this area over here with the same rotation zero, right? And then also I have from 100% back to 5% again rotation uh, from here, sorry, to up to here rotation zero. So as you can see, you have this very cool kind of movement of the circuit, right? And, and in order to apply it to the, to the circle itself, what I do is that I use the animation CSS property. I just use it to be moved. Then three seconds is the length of the animation. And then infinite, it means that I want it to run infinitely, right? So if I set it to maybe, let's say, uh, nothing, it's going to happen once, right? Nothing else, right? So let's make it infinite. Again, I have a tutorial on how to utilize the animation. I will, I will, I will just share the link to, for you as well. And yes, so that's pretty much it. So you can see that the circle goes like this. And ultimately, because of our filter, the SVG filter, it gets this kind of bushy, you know, detaching, attaching kind of effect to the bigger circle. Right. Now to the big circle, the same concept applies. I applied an animation, pretty much the same length of the small circle. And then I used ease in out as my timing function. They kind of have this right. And then obviously infinite as well. And now if we go to the scale animation down here, Pretty much any time that I have this transition from, you know, zero degree to 36 degrees and the transform origin on the Y axis to be minus 220 to zero, that's around the time that I want my uh, scale animation to happen. So as you can see, pretty much the same scale here. And then over here, you know, I just set it to one and then from 8% to 50%, which is pretty much around the time that this animation happens, right? From 5% to 49%, this is like from 8% to 50%, just to consider the time that this ball, you know, comes around this area to go in, and also, again, the area that, that it goes out, right? So as you can see, I play with the scale from here to here, right? And then again, from 70% to 90%, right? When it goes here, right? Here and here. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, one thing that I want to say is that it really boils down to, uh, you know, your understanding of the movements in real life. Uh, and that's when you can basically figure out what numbers to use over here, you know, when to kind of change things to kind of get the best feel and look. And it is not that, you know, in the, in the very beginning I started this, I knew all the values. So there is a bit of a trial and error. You have to play with these numbers, see what, what happens, see how it looks, and then again, retune those numbers to get your feel and look, right? Your desired feel and look. All right, so if you like this tutorial, as always, please go ahead and like and share this tutorial. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe to, to my channel. I'm pretty responsive. If you had any questions, go ahead and just, you know, uh, shoot a comment down there. And yes, uh, well, see you next time. Goodbye.